or just see when you're out for a walk. Happy lady and a horse and pony. Well, this morning too, we've gone down to um, the Glen Russian Slate Quarry. In my ignorance a few years ago, I thought this was part of the mines working at Beckwith's, but it's not. It's a separate entity. Ran from the late 1850s to the late 1860s. Loads of money lost in it. Slightly different, the fireplace is only in, only in the gable end this time, which is supposed to make sense because that's where the beat of the weather will come from. All of the same style, this is number four. Again, same amount of windows and doors, two floors and fireplaces. I really think these places should have been preserved by somebody, but... This is number two. Again, fireplaces galore. Two floors. Looks like the ash of sycamore have taken over. Glen May side, this is the first one you come to. It's double floored. Chimneys on both floors. This should be classed as an office. But uh, I don't. I hadn't realised until I took some photographs. It's on a, an ever, ever such a slight curve, and I suppose that would point to me or tell me that the road was here before these were built. They like the heat, and who can blame them? Straight as the day they were built. Now the um, quarry here behind me was in volume two. Uh, in my ignorance for many years I always thought this was part of the Beckwith's mines, but it's not. It's completely separate entry and um, it has quite a checkered history really. A lot of money lost on it and it was in operation for six or seven years. So I've got a bit of history off the web from the High Museum site, which I'll read out to you. And um, you can either switch off, go make yourself a cup of tea, or listen if you want. Or also while it's on, show you some bits that I've videoed around this place. It's a great place to visit, absolutely. And the river you can hear below us rolling is the Glen May River. In 1862, when the actual company was uh, initially, well not initially, but it was changed over the name, it came to the Alaman Slate and Flag Company. Um, it issued £10,000 for the capital 
and the 5,000 shares, which is two pounds each. The Moon's, in, Moon is Herald at the time, so perhaps it's right. And uh, when I did a bit of research on value of uh, slate today, a good Welsh slate is about £30 per two square metres. Uh, but the Manx slate was 30 by 10 inches, which would be worth about £5 a slate today. Well, in 1863, that was about 10 pence a slate. So how they were ever going to expect to get that money recouped and make a profit and pay peel, I have no idea. In 1864 there was uh, 50 Welsh guys employed in the quarry and they couldn't speak any English. So some of the hymns in the little chapel up here had to be changed around or sung in a different way so they could understand it. Because I think the Welsh uh, quarrying stopped sooner than the Manx. So a lot of them came to Alaman and worked on the mines and quarries for us over here. In 1865 the um, capital was extended to 200,000 and it was employing three or four hundred men. Use big lintels but they would have afforded lintels because they would have dug them out themselves. And that's what 100,000 slates so from 63 to 69 um, the, I suppose the wheels fell off the cart basically. Um, one of the guys, or guy who was the commissary, was a guy called Johnson, and he was getting sued uh, for the loan that one of the fellow called John Dutton gave to the Manx Slate and Flag Company. Lent him sixteen hundred pounds in eighteen seventy, which would be like two hundred grand today, I reckon. And um, he'd signed a note, but he wasn't allowed, or wasn't able to sign the note. So. Even those days, you know, there were still injustices in the world, still people losing their money and making money. So what happened to all that cash away when we all never know. Um, but time moves on and the uh, slate quarry was up on the hill opposite where I'm looking today. And if you go down the path on the other side of the valley, you get to it. The spoilers are all still running out down the side of the hill. And then um, that's basically it really. Uh, the cars themselves were probably built between 1838 and 1879 by the Alaman Mining Company. Um, the men would have um, used this probably as the officers. Men would have walked here from Glen May or Fox Hill, St John's to work. Um, another little interesting fact down in the valley here below me there was a reservoir I think which came into um, occupy, oh, construction around by 1938. So supplied Glenmill, Balakal and Dolby. It was full, filled with the water running down from a small service reservoir tank further up the Glen Russian River. The water itself was eventually stopped in 2010. But what would worry me is were they going to drink water that actually ran or over the residue ran from, from lead mines? I'm not sure that's a good idea or not, or would have been. Anyway, sorry about the paper, but I had to do it this way. I can't remember all this stuff. And if it's wrong, it's only what John Kenny told me a long time ago. It's lies. If it's lies I'm telling you, it's lies I've either read or been told. So, make of it what you can. Well, the reason I've come down this road really is to um, find an old ruin. Like Goldie mentioned in one in his Thornton book, the crofter. Uh, about a ruin on this road. It's a little bit of history, so I'm trying to find it. And no success so far. But just look at that view. Isn't it just stupendous? And just picking up the uh, side of the trees. It's just beautiful. What a lucky place to be. And what a lucky place to live. Imagine everyone those little bits of stone would have been touched by a hand. You know JCBs in these days. Picked, blown out, shoveled out, hacked out, then trimmed, carted. What a job. What a job. Not sure if you can see this or not or get an understanding of it. This wall is virtually vertical. 
Imagine setting to and building that. I can't believe anybody even attempt it. Wonder how many minus feet have tr tramped this little road home from a night out. You know, buses here. The old legs and feet, I think. This track comes up out of the Glen uh, May River. It comes down from the round table as a footpath. And even I have got some hard memories of this area. Painful memories too. And that's for another day. On my way home now. The last few seconds of videoing before the battery dies. I must get another battery. The famous Glen May River, which is quite harsh when she got full flow on. It obviously isn't today. That little uh, thing behind me here, or in front of you, I think that was where the reservoir was. And that was uh, decommissioned in 2010. And um, built in 1938 for Dolby and Glen May Village. But as I've said a few times, I wonder whether that was a good idea. Having uh, water coming from lead mines. I don't think I'll be able to do it these days. This is tricky video. I have to avoid falling over the edge. I recommend it. It's a long way down. And back home we go. spotted. I don't know about this one at all. It's on the back track that goes into Balakotia Farm. So maybe one day or originally it was on the workers' cottages, mine workers' cottages. History. How would you know? The trees are taken over again now. Quite a big one too. Would have been your chalag. And um I'm not sure whether that'd be the chimney in the corner. Maybe. <laughs> 